I'm going to make a short presentation on report cards uh, with the theme that they can be an effective environmental management tool. Innovative environmental reporting can be effective, and I think one of the biggest reasons it's effective is because of peer pressure. And the peer pressure is, is, is between different reporting regions. Everybody wants to be a little better than their, particularly their neighbor. So uh, this is a really powerful motivator. Second, we've trained people for at least 12 years, some of us many more years, in educational systems in which you get report cards regularly. And so uh, people have been trained and to anticipate and expect what uh, good marks and, and not so good marks or consequences are. And they also are really relevant to, uh, because of their ability to synthesize large amounts of data. So they're five basic steps in producing report cards. First, a conceptual framework is created, then some indicators are selected, reporting reasons are chosen, scoped out, defining thresholds for each of those indicators, calculating a scorecard, some methodology that's transparent for that, and then finally communicating the results. So I'll just go through those five steps one by one. This is a conceptual framework we used for Southeast Queensland and Morton Bay when we came up with a report card system there and we had six indicators turbidity seagrass sewage nitrogen plumes water column nutrients phytoplankton and toxic cyanobacterial blooms lingbia and then they're linked through this conceptual diagram to catchment and sewage runoff secondly choosing indicators that convey meaningful ecological information and can be reliably measured and this is a uh, a study we did with the National Park Service in the U.S. with 22 different indicators and, and, and we randomly selected a subset of those 22 indicators from 2 to 21 and then calculated uh, report card scores using that number of indicators over and over and over again and what we found was if you have less than six indicators you get extreme variability. Once you get over six, your variability gets under control, and so uh, we, we like to say um, number of indicators you want. You want to be able to count on both hands, but not take your shoes off. You don't need more than ten or so. So uh, once you have some indicators, you need to define thresholds uh, to establish these benchmarks, and you know for these different regions that you're going to report in. Here's an example of two types of thresholds: either a binary, pass fail or a linear multiple threshold. And you can see that uh, in this example, at, uh, DO at 5.8 milligram per liter, with a binary it passes, but you don't really appreciate how much it passes, where if you have multiple thresholds, you can get a better feel for where you are on that gradient. And uh, binary can work when you have huge data sets, uh, but when you have limited data, you're probably better off at the multiple threshold level. And then the fourth step is taking these different data and then integrating them into a scorecard or a grade. And this is the way we uh, started out with Chesapeake Bay, where we had three water quality indicators, chlorophyll, water clarity, dissolved oxygen, three biotic indicators, uh, a benthic IBI, index of biotic integrity, uh, seagrass uh, area, and a phytoplankton IBI. And we combine these into these water quality biotic indices into a Chesapeake Bay report card with grades that in this case range from B to D minus. And of course uh, um, these uh, simple grades capture public attention. Here we have some examples in Chesapeake of front page uh, report cards and media events associated with the release, annual release of report cards. Southeast Queensland of course is doing that on an annual basis. So one of the things we've evolved towards is maintaining a constant uh, uh, stoplight uh, color scheme from red to green. Uh, red is, is a, in, in, indicative of danger. Uh, if you put people in a room that's red, their blood pressure goes up. Green room, uh, blood pressure goes down. So, and then uh, gradation, gradations in between when we have more than three colors we can come up with orange and, and light green to add more colors along that gradient. You can see here in the, in the chest peak on the bottom 
you can see these different grades going from using the stoplight from red to green. So one of the other things that's really important, a report card is great for a snapshot. It gives you an instantaneous, or more or less, an annual snapshot, and uh, you get you can get a certain gradient. But then uh, when you uh, can look at these over time, you can actually create trajectories, and and there are some really important emergent properties that you get when you combine indicators into a, a Bay Health index, and then look at that over time that gives you information that you wouldn't achieve otherwise. And uh, these trajectories are, are, are quite interesting uh, to analyze. We think that what's happening in the uh, declining trajectories where there's degradation is that that's a negative feedback associated with dissolved oxygen uh, uh, dead zone, so to speak, uh, low oxygen in the water column, which uh, causes the sediment nutrients to come uh, squirting out into the water column to fuel more blooms instead of being trapped and buried. And then vice versa, when we get a, a slight improvement of water quality allowing resurgence of seagrasses, we get uh, baffling filtering and positive ecological feedbacks and improving water quality as it's their bay health as a, as a result. So uh, this is a governance model that we're using in Maryland where you take this um, these report cards and report them out to the the governor and his the staff of of in, in a monthly fashion, and then uh, using the Socratic method in a real uh, um, interactive set, uh, you can you can track not just the health but then the, the causes, the problems, and the solutions. And this has been uh, a real uh, boon in being able to. Uh, implement more effectively the different management actions. In this case, you know, uh, sewage upgrades, cover crops for agricultural runoff, uh, tracking that to see if we can't get the uh, bay health to, to budge. And in the last few years, it's actually uh, improved. So it's important to consider what report cards do. They're more than just a, a public relations exercise that can actually be used to guide management actions. So we've been doing report cards starting in South Queensland, in Southeast Queensland for about 15 years. And some reflections on that um, is that adaptive monitoring is actually part of the whole adaptive management, uh, which means report cards shouldn't be static. They need to evolve. Our Chesapeake report card now includes fish and uh, some new indicator, nitrogen phosphorus, which we didn't originally have. Secondly, regular public dialogue from the report card release, the, the releases of these report cards can build community knowledge. So we take each annual event and try to tell some stories. And uh, some cases it's about sea level rise, and climate change. Other cases it's about um, of the, the the large dam and overflow and scouring. And uh, so each time you you get a chance to tell a story in a public forum. And then finally. The first report card, and that's where we're at with the Chesapeake Bay uh, Reef Resilience, uh, Climate Resilience Index, takes a lot of energy. The activation energy is, is uh, like, a, like a catalytic um, uh, enzymatic reaction, takes a lot more energy uh, than, than the subsequent report cards. So it's going to take some, some, some work, but uh, once you've got it, it, it gets easier after that. So that's a quick uh, intro. There's a a uh, bunch of resources available on the Integration and Application Network website. Uh, we have a, a blog with a lot of report card uh, discussions, a bunch of videos, report cards and, of different types and sorts from around the world, and some references. Um, so there's, there's more to